Good morning and welcome to my presentation. My name is Christy Watson and I am the Information Systems Manager for Knox Shopping Centres. I have been asked to present to you today the Smart Shopping Trolley. Let me quickly run you through the agenda for this presentation. First, I will introduce to you the Smart Trolley and take you through how this could be utilised by Knox Shopping Centres. We will then explore which other companies have used the Smart Trolley and what the associated risks are. We will then look at what resources will be needed if the project moves forward after the pilot store and how this will impact on the company. I will take you through the financial model and the cost benefit analysis which has been forecasted for this project with an overview of three scenarios through sensitivity analysis before concluding the presentation. The Smart Shopping Trolley. Let me start with a question. How often have you returned home from a trip to the supermarket only to realise you have either forgotten an important item from your shopping list or you have accidentally purchased an incorrect quantity of chocolate chips you needed for that birthday cake you had to bake tonight? It's a common problem amongst our customers. Let me introduce to you the first key feature of the Smart Shopping Trolley. You are sitting at home and you create your shopping list online using a Knotts Shopping Centre app. You then arrive at the store and log into your account on the Smart Shopping Trolley. Not only does your shopping list appear before you, the navigation system will now direct you to the aisles needed for your required quantities of anything from your shopping list or even from that last minute recipe you entered into the system for tonight's dinner. As you walk through the store, placing items into the trolley, the barcode scanner located on the front of the trolley will scan each item so you have an accumulated total on the screen in front of you, or conduct a price check of any items needed. Once your shopping trip has concluded, the total is already calculated for you and you are able to proceed swiftly through the self-checkout in time to make it home to have dinner ready and that cake in the oven. Now that we have gone through the benefits to Knott's customers, allow me to tell you how this technology can be utilised. Allowing customers to log in when they arrive in the store not only builds greater customer satisfaction through a loyalty program, it also allows us to track the behaviour of individual customers by collecting data on what products they buy. This will then allow marketing to direct specific specials and promotions at different customers while they shop, which will be displayed on the screen in front of them. Implementing a new technology will always come with certain risks. Given the smart shopping trolley is still such new technology, there is certainly a risk involved in introducing it to our stores when they are still improving on current models. One of the main risks at present is determining whether or not investing in this product is financially viable. This is something we will discuss later in the presentation. Not all companies which have tried to implement the smart shopping trolley have been successful. So who has trialled the smart trolley so far? In 2004, Stop and Shop Supermarket Company in New England experimented with the intelligent shopping cart in 16 of its 300 stores. However, the project failed and they moved towards handheld devices called Easy Shop. Given the worldwide thirst of new technology, the smart trolley has advanced since this experiment with several other systems being created. MediaCart, together with Microsoft, then went on to develop their own version of the product and this was piloted by ShopRite along the east coast of America beginning in 2007. The pilot stores were considered a huge success based on customer reviews and the utilisation of the customer and sales data. Reportedly, 20,000 customers per week were testing the media cart. To be able to begin production on these smart carts, Allow me to take you through the resourcing requirements. First, we will look at the hardware requirements. To enable customers to use the smart trolley, we need a tablet with an LCD touchscreen to display the balances and marketing promotions, a barcode scanner to read products as they are placed into the trolley, a data storage system to hold our database of products, customer behaviour tracking information, 
and navigation software, as well as RFID, which is radio frequency identification, to track the stock of items. To enable this hardware to work correctly, there are also se several software requirements. A large Wi-Fi network is needed to allow the trolleys to move throughout the store and operate wirelessly, a database listing of all products within the store, a navigation system to direct customers through the store to correct aisles, and of course, the operating system which holds it all together and is the face of what the customer interacts with. A question I have no doubt you all have on your mind, how will this implementation affect the business? Firstly, let me direct you to our internal processes and departments. Initially, the HR department will be kept busy with the recruitment of new staff to work on the production of this new technology. While there will be multiple short-term contracts, there is our intention for the smart shopping trolley to eventually lower the number of checkout staff required in the future years. We want this new venture to be successful and do not want to be seen to be replacing people with equipment. So we'll be working with consultants to work out the best way to look after our people and where possible, place them in other roles or offer redundancy packages. Sales and marketing will take on a new focus, being able to promote on the screen to individual customers, as well as to promote the smart shopping trolley to gain customers within each store. Finance and accounting will be impacted through an increased amount of supply invoices coming through and with the production of new reporting structures to assist in measuring the success and revenue of this new technology. Production will have an entirely new department created who will design this new product to be used and will offer ongoing support with the trolleys. We foresee an increase to relationships with suppliers as we acquire new technology and with the increase of customers selling through the doors will come an increase in purchases. Of course, all of these resources and changes to internal processes will come at a cost. There will be the initial implementation cost, which include the research and design of the product, consulting costs, production, marketing, staff training and salaries, as well as the hardware, software and network as mentioned above. It is expected to come in at an initial cost of $2.24 million in the first year, with ongoing costs of $500,000 each year to maintain and support. Revenue is projected to be $850,000 in the first year, an increase by 10% year on year for the first six years. What this means is the initial outlay is forecasted to have a payback period of 4.66 years. So the initial investment will be earned back after those 4.66 years of operation. With a discount rate set at 10%, the net present value after six years comes in at $198,848, which suggests a profitable investment with the present value being $1.24 and the future value being $198,848,000 higher. The internal rate of return sits at 13%. Assuming the cost of capital is less than this, the rate means we should move forward with the project. The profitability index is 1.09. Anything above a 1 indicates a positive profitability. All three of these measures, net present value, internal rate of return and the profitability index tell us to go ahead with the project. I now take you through the sensitivity analysis conducted in the processes of researching the cost. What if not shopping centres only achieve an increased revenue rate year on year of 6% rather than the expected 10%? This would increase the payback period to 4.91 years the net present value to minus $166,243, an internal rate of return of 7%, and the profitability index would be calculated at 0 0.93. These measures indicate the project is not financially viable if we proceed with a 6% revenue increase. 
The second scenario I take you through is a better case where our implementation costs could potentially come in at only $2 million. This would give us a payback period of 4.07 years, a net present value of $417,030, an internal rate of return of 16%, and a profitability index of 1.21. These measures now show an increase of profitability against the original forecasted data. The final scenario we forecasted was if the yearly costs after implementation were 300000 per year for the first six years. This resulted in a payback period of just 3.39 years, a net present value of a huge $990,714, an internal rate of return of 23%, and a profitability index of 1.44, all suggesting we should most definitely move forward with the project. As I hope you have been able to see, the introduction of a smart shopping trolley at North Shopping Centres will bring an increase of customer loyalty, increased customer satisfaction, which will both lead to increased revenue as a result of our new ways of working. I would like to recommend not Shopping Centres invest in MediaCart, who work together with Microsoft to build a reliable and financially viable product. The forecasted analysis of the costs and benefits bring us out on top with the possibility of increasing the revenue further if we are able to reduce the costs year on year.